Well, hello, welcome everyone. Um, my name's Yvette Berry. I'm the ACT Labor Minister for Education and Early Childhood and Youth Affairs. And I'd like to acknowledge that today we are meeting, albeit virtually, on the beautiful stormy weather today on the land of the Ngunnawal people. And I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge uh, their continuing significant contribution they make to the life of this city and this region. I'm really, really pleased to be here today with the AC um, Children and Young People Commissioner and some of you in our ACT public schools as well who will be returning to school over the next couple of weeks. I know it's been a really tough time for everybody, so I know you're looking forward to return. And there's been a lot of changes happening, moving to remote learning and then moving back to on-campus learning. So there's been some changes happening and um, I just wanted to remind everybody first about those return dates. So I'll just go through those now. So from Monday the 25th of October, that's week four of term four, preschool, kindergarten and years one, two, six, nine and 10 go back to school. And from Monday the 1st of November, this is week five of term four, years three, four, five, seven, and eight return to school. And college students have returned a little bit earlier in, in, in term four. And so looking forward to seeing everybody back on campus soon. So let's get started. And today I would like to introduce to you the ACT Children and Young People Commissioner. Yuma, and thank you, Yvette. It's great to be here today. And um, I'd equally like to acknowledge that we stand on the grounds of the Ngunnawal people. Um, and it's an absolute privilege uh, to walk their lands um, and to be welcomed onto their country. Um, as Yvette said, I'm Jodie Griffiths-Cook. I'm uh, your Children and Young People Commissioner here in the ACT. And uh, part of my role is to make Canberra the best place it can be, I guess, for children and young people. Um, and to do that and to do it well requires me to listen actively to what um, children and young people have to say um, and to use and to find out, I guess, about the issues that matter to, to them so that I can use that to let the ACT government know what's important for children and young people here in the ACT. Um, I'm always open to hearing from children and young people. And at the moment, um, I'm particularly interested in hearing what children and young people tell me about COVID and the changes happening in the community. Um, so if anyone does want to get in touch, um, I believe my contact details are going to be at the end of this video. So if you are interested in letting me know or if you've got questions that I can pass on and get answers to, more than open and, and would love to hear from um, as many of you who would like to get in touch. Um, now, I guess let's get on to the uh, um, important people in today's show, uh, which is the school students who are here with us today. Um, I'd firstly like to introduce Gia. Hello, Gia, and uh, welcome. I guess, can you start by maybe telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Jodie. Hi, Yvette. Um, thanks for having me here today. My name's Gia. I'm a Year 6 student at Margaret Henry School. Um, a little bit about myself is I'm part of the student parliament at my school and I'm a minister for marketing and communications. Um, so I help with school advertising and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Gia. Gee, marketing and comms, I think uh, I need you in my team. I've got to say that's one of the skills we don't have a lot of. It's, um, I've said a couple of times, it's me and my two staff sitting in our bedrooms, <laughs> trying the hardest to do the good job in that space. But uh, so it's great to have you here today. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Sage. Hi, Sage. Which school are you from? Hi, I am Sage and I'm from Macquarie Primary School. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, Sage? I like to read a lot, and two of my favourite authors are Chris Colfer and um, Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I love reading too. It's one of my favourite things. I don't think I get quite enough time to do it these days, though. I'd uh, certainly love more time to be able to sit down with a good book, especially a day like today. It's um, perfect weather for sitting on the lounge and reading. Um, and last but definitely not least, I'd like to introduce Ishan. Welcome, Ishan. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jodin. Hi, everyone. My name is Ishan and I'm a Year 8 student at Lynham High. Uh, my favourite classes are probably history and PE, and I play guitar and basketball in my spare time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Oh, look, it sounds like you've got a couple of good things that um, hopefully you're now getting to get out and about and enjoy them a bit more, especially that basketball, though, again, probably a bit wet perhaps the last couple of days. Um, Ishan, let's start with you. What was the first question you wanted to ask Yvette today? 
Uh, yeah, thanks. So, Minister Berry, I have a question about safety. So, what are the safety measures that kids should know about before they go back to school? Hi, thanks, Sushan. That is a great question, and I have a very long answer because <laughs> it has a lot of detail about making sure that people feel safe when they're going to school and that everybody does the right thing. So, firstly, of course, nobody should go to school if they're unwell. If you have a symptom of any sort, a sore throat, coughing, runny nose, Please don't go to school. You really need to stay at home. Um, schools have a number of safety measures, including that one. And there are these are the usual kinds of measures that we've been following in the community that we need everybody to keep doing when they return to school. So this includes those things that we know really well, practising good hand hygiene, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer. Um, making sure that for adults they use the check-in Canberra app when they um, come to the school and also making sure, of course, wearing masks and keeping our distance from each other as much as we possibly can. Um, each school will have a COVID-19 safety action plan, which is really important, and that will have all of the details in it um, to make sure that everybody knows what needs to happen if there is un an unfortunate um, event arise that there is a COVID case in a school but also all of these safety measures that we've learned so much about in the last couple of years, which has kept us all safe. So some of that assurance plan and that action plan will include making sure that we limit the mingling of students and staff in the school. So really staggering breaks and things like that and making sure that students stay within their class groups and don't mingle with other students. Um, that's really important as well. And there's also a whole lot of information in that assurance plan around uh, ventilation and how that works throughout every single school. Every single school looks different, so its plans will be different as well. And the quickest way to make sure that we can get all that fresh air from outside into the classrooms is by opening a window, the old fashioned way. So there's been a lot of work happening to make sure that we can open windows again making sure all our ventilation systems and heating cooling systems are working really well and can increase the airflow if we need it or, or slow it down if it doesn't need to be so much. Um, and uh, also a wonderful thing that will come out of this is spending a bit of time taking our classes outdoors. So that'll be a nice break, um, an opportunity for everybody to get some really nice fresh air outside if it's not too hot or not too cold. Um, there's also going to be a whole lot more cleaning happening in your schools. So you'll be seeing more cleaners doing those really important touch point areas like door handles and desks and things like that to make sure that everything's really clean in all those common areas as well as toilets and um, staff rooms. And also schools will also need to limit the number of people and visitors that come to their schools. So that means that parents and carers won't be allowed to come onto the school campus for a little while until we can be sure that it's safe for them to do so. So we really need your parents and carers to stay away to keep all the rest of us safe, all right? Uh, and so that means only staff and essential visitors that will be allowed on schools. You'll also, maybe you've heard that we've, the Chief Health Officer has made it, made it mandatory for school staff to have vaccinations in our primary schools. Um, so that's really to make sure that everybody who can't get vaccinated yet, who's under 12, that we can keep them all safe. So um, that's a really, really good information so, for everyone. So I hope that's really helped with making you feel that everything's gonna be safe when you return to school. Thanks, Yvette. That's a lot of information, as you said, but I think, you know, it's really good to know that schools are obviously doing as much as they can to keep students safe. There's obviously been a lot of thinking that's been put into how best to do that and, you know, recognising that each school's different, um, as you've said. So I think, um, you know, I, I guess if people aren't quite sure about their particular school, um, they'd, you know, call or speak to, um, you know, the principal or someone, whoever's a nominated person at the school there. Um, Gia, let's throw to you next. I believe you've got a question that also relates to safety. Yes, thank you. Um, about which year groups will have to wear masks? Thanks, Gia, and that is a good question as well. So all students who are in high school and college will need to wear masks except for when they're eating and drinking because you can't eat through a mask, obviously. When you're communicating to somebody who can't hear very well, when you're exercising vigorously, because then it means that you can't breathe very well, 
or in a, an emergency where you need to take your mask off. So for a medical assistance or something like that. But masks also might not be suitable for everybody. So people who have a disability um, or uh, for some medical reason can't wear a mask, they just need to talk with their school about that and they, can, um, they don't need to wear a mask if it's not safe for them. Now for years three, four, five and six, you can wear a mask, but it's not mandated. So if you decide that you want to wear a mask and your family decides that you want to wear a mask, then you can wear a mask, that's fine as well. For all students who are under year two, it's really not safe for you to wear a mask. Um, it may, there could be some choking hazards or things like that. So the health advice is that you don't need to wear a mask. Um, and so uh, that's at the moment, at, at this stage, under year twos don't need to wear one because it's just not safe at the moment. Um, also, what would happen if someone forgets their mask? Well, that's going to happen, I'm sure. And if you do forget to bring your mask, you just need to talk to your teacher and they'll be able to provide you one. Thanks. We get a lot of information online about what's happening in other states and even overseas. So I think it's really great to hear that clear information about mask wearing here in the ACT. Um, and also, I guess, recognising where that flexibility is needed so that we're, um, you know, we're taking account of individual needs and um, that's really important too. Sage, over to you now for your questions about catching up with friends at school. Um, I was just wondering if, what would it be like, will we be able to hang out with our friends at like recess and lunchtime? Or? Thanks, Sage. So remember that schools will be limiting uh, how students mingle together. So that might mean that if you have friends in older age groups or younger age groups, that you might not be able to hang out with them at lunchtime for the time being. But remember, this won't last forever and we'll be easing more restrictions in the community. So those changes will change again soon. But for the time being, we just need to limit that mingling. Ishan, you had a question about information for students and going back to school. Yeah, thanks, Jodie. So I was wondering how information about going back to school is going to be presented in a way that our students can easily understand and remember. Thank you. And that's, Ishan, a good question so that everybody knows what's expected of them. So there's a lot of information going out to school communities at the moment. And uh, that's going out across a range of different spaces on websites, on social media like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, but there's also some really useful links that will be included past, after this video as well. So for um, students and young people, as well as parents and carers, they can have a look at that information. Um, there's already been a few emails going out to parents about return to schools from individual schools and what that will look like. So uh, you will see that a for, for year four, Term four, you'll see that gradual stepping out of a return to school in a really visual way, so it makes sense to young people. At school, you'll see a lot of visuals and pictures around the school to make, remind you all to keep safe and healthy and to keep your distance from each other. Um, so you can look out for them as well in your school communities. If you feel like there's not enough, then maybe tell, talk to your school and they can um, work with you about putting more, more signs up for people to be able to see. Um, teachers will also be work, stepping through some of the changes that will be required of um, students in their schools using the positive behaviours for learning framework and you should all um, have those frameworks in your school and understand how they work really well. So that will include lots of posters and uh, pictures and everything as well to make sure everybody understands and is reminded about everything we need to do to keep each other safe. Thanks, Yvette. And I'm happy, obviously, to help out with that um, messaging as well. So we'll certainly look at um, the next couple of newsletters, uh, our Lock It Down newsletters, um, and also the information we've got on our COVID Info for Kids webpage on the um, Human Rights Commission site so that we can, um, yeah, I guess, help to make sure we're getting that information out consistently as well. Um, Gia, now let's go to you with your question about returning to school. Yes, thank you. Um, so I was wondering, how are the year groups selected for who gets to come back to school a bit earlier than the others? So that's a good question too. And so the ACT government's been working on a phased return for all the different cohorts to be returning to school. So you'll remember that uh, college students were prioritised to get their COVID-19 vaccination so that they could get back in term three because after they had their vaccinations, that was the safest time for them to do that. 
there were around 6,000 students, staff, parents and carers who uh, talked about um, how they could return to school uh, safely. And so uh, we did this survey to understand what they thought was the best way to return and which age groups would be the best to return. And so the advice that we got from everybody in our school communities was that they really wanted those transition years, year 12 students in particular, because they needed to do their exams, um, but also making sure that younger children and preschool to year two school year were also prioritised because for those younger people, it's really hard for, harder for them to be away from their friends and learning and doing that sort of face-to-face -face learning as well. So we really listened to the school communities. We did have that feedback from around 6,000 people, which was really important and told us what we needed to do, along with the Chief Health Officer's advice to return to school safely, but make sure we put those year groups that really needed to return sooner first. Thanks, Yvette. And uh, certainly from my side of things with a year 10 um, daughter, as well as kids in kinder and year one, um, the timing, I think I'd certainly agree with the um, you've definitely responded to what uh, you know parents and um, students and th themselves have said and certainly what their experiences have been. Yeah. Sage, let's hear from you now. Um, you had a question about schoolwork and assessment. Yes, thank you. Yvette, I was wondering if the schoolwork I've done during remote learning counts and mm. how the assessments will work this year. Will students be giving like a status grade for this semester instead of a full grade? Mm -hmm. That's a great question as well. And a lot of young people and their families have been asking about that as well. So all of your work that you have done will be assessed as normal. Teachers realise that you've been learning from home and that um, the different kinds of challenges that you've experienced from home has affected the way you've been learning as well. So a status or an S grade is generally only used as a very last resort if a student has been completely unable to do their assessment because they've been unwell. Um, and remote learning is not really sufficient for an S grade without additional um, issues affecting the student. So if you've just been unable to do anything during lockdown because you've been unwell, that might be one of those circumstances, but remote education on, it own, on its own isn't. So you'll receive a report for term four, but it will look a little bit different because it will reflect what you've learned in remote education, not what you haven't learned, right? So have a chat with your teacher, have your parents and your carers che um, check in with your teachers as well if you're concerned about that. Uh, and, that and then you can get the best advice moving forward. Thanks. Ishan, over to you now with another question about returning to school. My friend's parents are worried about sending him back to school and want him to keep doing remote learning. Is that allowed? Yeah, so I guess one of the things, Ishan, um, that we've been talking about our community is how we're going to make sure that our schools are as safe as possible, but also understanding that, of course, people are going to be feeling a little bit nervous about a return to school. So we've talked a lot already about the health and safety measures that we're putting in place in our schools to make sure that our school students are safe. Um, and all of that advice is being followed based on the Chief Health Officer's advice. So we really do want to encourage um, students to return to school as soon as they can based on the guidelines that we have, because people really, young people really do need to get back to school and see with their peers uh, and have those, you know, really important, you know, relationships with, with their young people and the teachers. And I know that's what we heard from young people is people were really keen to get back to school to see their friends and their teachers because they miss them. And that's why we're doing it the way we have been making it safe. So while teachers won't be really able to teach online at the same time as they teach face-to-face -face education, if there is an issue with a school student that for some reason they just can't come back to school at the time that everybody else is, then we'll make sure that there's um, opportunities in place for them to be supported at home. But it won't be the same education that they've been receiving remotely over the last couple of, or the last couple of months now. And of course, students in year three Will be in year three and up will be able to access Chromebooks if they need to from home to continue to do their work via um, the Google Classrooms, which everybody should be familiar with. And students in preschool to year two will receive that additional support as well. So in lessons like English, maths and one other area um, that they might want to do some learning in as well. So it will look a little bit different. But the best advice I can give is just to keep in touch and talk with your teacher. Sage, let's go to you now. Uh, you had a question about a friend. 
Um, Yvette, I was worried about my friend who seems really down at the moment. What can I do to help them? Thanks, Sage. Yeah, it's as it's been a really tough time and some people will be feeling really down uh, and maybe they've had a bit of an emotional roller coaster over the last couple of months as we've been going through this and, and wondering about their own feelings. I think the best thing that you can do, Sage, is um, just help by just listening and being there for your friend, uh, making sure that you encourage them to talk to a teacher or to a parent or a carer or a trusted adult in their life. Um, and there's also really good support for them using the telehealth services and they can get access to a psychologist. So there's a whole lot of information about that program at the end of this video. Um, but Sage, good on you for just, you know, being there for your friend. Thanks to all the adults involved. You know, it's it's been it's been crazy for everyone. But I reckon the, with the efforts which everyone's been putting in, you know, like parents and um, teachers and just other adults in the community, the efforts that they've been putting in to make sure you know everyone's everyone's still going well. I mean, yeah, big huge thanks. This is sort of directed at teachers and. Um people who are involved in the school I think it's well at least my school um there's been like a lot of support which is really good and um I think it, I thought it would be important to say thank you to those people there should be like a thank you for the frontline workers like um they've done a really good job protecting Canberra we haven't gotten that bad like Sydney or Victoria and I think it's all thanks to um not even just like frontline workers but just our families and people who still go to work just to protect us and keep Canberra safe.